for Christmas. Now, later I'm going to be speaking to the actress Sheila Hancock, who's written her first novel. She has the might of Bloomsbury Publishing House behind her. And I guess she's testament to the fact that it's never too late to write. But just how easy is it for you to get something released, to get it on those shelves? Self-publishing now accounts for just over 30% of the e-book market, and that is growing. Joining me in the studio is Claire McNaughton, a journalist, blogger and author from Salisbury. Claire, thank you for coming in. Good to see you. So give us an idea then from both sides of the fence, because you've worked in in, uh, the the world of publishing as well as self-publishing. So what are the pros and cons of both worlds? Well, the pro of self-publishing is that you have complete editorial freedom. So you can write whatever you like and you don't have to answer to an editor. And um, But the pros of publishing, of like traditional publishing, is they might give you an advance. So then they will carry all the overheads of um, publishing a book, which it, um, it, it, that's the cost, isn't it? A book is a business, really. Even when you self-publish a book, it's still a small business. And uh, so when you work with a traditional publisher, they obviously take that risk on for you. And they also have the distribution channels to get into the mainstream markets in a way that you don't. When you're self-publishing a book, you are a minnow and you are learning a trade and you are the writer, the marketeer, the publisher, you are everything. And so um, it is is challenging. How hard is it to get published? It is very hard. 150,000 books per year in the UK alone are published. So even if you get traditionally published, even making an impact in that market in itself is challenging. You've got track record, though. You're a journalist. You write for newspapers. You're right on Huff- Huffington Post. You've got a good blog. You've got an established book out, the Tales from the Domestic Frontline book that you wrote. Even with all that, would you find it difficult to get a publishing deal? Yes, even with all that. I mean, I have an agent as well, and I'm doing my second book, Looking for Mr. Rabbit, which I'm in the process of debating whether to self-publish or go through traditional publishing. I'm working with a professional editor on this book um, from Bradford Naven, actually, Addendum, and we are going to um, go through the copy and then see again at the end of that process whether we think we can get a traditional publishing deal or not. What's your agent's view on whether you should self-publish? Well, the thing is, because... We are in a bit of a crossroads in publishing at the moment. Amazon definitely creates a vehicle from which you can reach your market, but people are still buying books from bookshops. So the the process hasn't evolved where the indie um, publisher or the self-publisher has more impact than the traditional publisher. Um, people are still buying physical books. And also the generation of readers is older. So I think, you know, the celebrity-led publishing, like the, like you said about autobiographies, they definitely are the market because it's all driven by the other media platforms like Strictly Come Dancing or X Factor or Bake Off mm. or any of these other sort of mass market TV shows. So... Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's challenging. Well, here's the question then. Given that we're going to be talking to Sheila Hancock later, who is hugely famous and already an accomplished writer writing about her own life, so no real surprise that she can get a deal with Bloomsbury. And you've already mentioned X Factor, Bake Off. Publishers tend to go for books that already have a mass market appeal. Yeah. Is, there, is oh. there ever an opportunity then for the new writer? It is harder. It is absolutely, definitely. Publishers are looking for a guaranteed 50,000 sales. They will not take a risk on a new writer in the same way they want. And it's not really, you know, unless you're someone like Hilary Mantle who did Wolf Hall, they're not going, you know, they're not going to take a risk. They don't want to take on new writers that are going to sell 1,500 books. And yet, Ian Rankin's first novel, print run, 750. The very first Harry Potter print run, less than 1,000. It seems absurd to me that they can ever, publishers can ever find the next big thing if they, they, well, they set their targets so high at That street cat named Bob, well, that was one of those surprise successes. But publishers would never have published Fifty Shades of Grey. They would never have selected that. It was only because of fan fiction and forum-based writing. So, the, so in that case, that shows that publishing has changed to a point where you as the writer almost need to come up with your own way of publicising your work before you even think about trying to get a publishing yeah, deal. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm, def- I'm writing a memoir and I'm not famous. So my agent has said, 
said to me, you know, you are at the end of the day writing, you're a good writer, so that's been proven. Like I've written a top time, in a Sunday Times top 10 bestseller for, I ghost wrote it. Um, and so I've got a proven, I'm credible as a writer. Mm. I've sold, you know, 800 of my own books. I do um, a lot of like WI talks, like I'm going to Christian Malford WI mm. tonight to do talks. But I'm not famous, so mm. I don't have a media, ve- media vehicle behind me. Caitlin Moran, she had a Times column. Mm. With that came a readership, so you have to build your own audience up. Well, I can't claim to be impartial here because I self-published The Long and Winding Road two years ago, and I was also at WI last night selling my book. <laughs> and what that, what that shows is that the, the marketplace has moved to such an extent that is it fair to say if you're a budding writer, you've actually got to be so much more now. You've got to be your own marketeer. You've got to organise your own press and publicity. You can't... I mean, even if you've got a publishing deal, they'd expect you to do that now. Yeah, they definitely would. I mean, I was published by Penguin, or we were published by Penguin. Well, I should just refer to the book, because... Yeah, it's Immediate Response by Mark Hammond. This is the book you ghost wrote I ghost wrote it. So how much, when you had that big deal with Penguin, how much did they expect you to do they gave us two weeks of their PR team that's all that's it the rest of it was down to the author yeah so and and marketing is definitely key and and also um, America is much more um, set up for the self-publishing market in the UK we and we are not and we're not a country who likes selling so we don't like pushy people we don't want authors that are going to be really really pushy so but America they would expect you to have at least a Facebook page with 2,000 likes on it as a minimum they want you to be on Twitter they want to see authors that are pushing themselves out there that are willing to self-promote like self-promotion is key in writing and also you need readers like where are all the readers people are reading less i read less mm. you must read less you because know it's too busy well there's too much to watch isn't it? i'm on i've got, got, net, I've got like netflix <laughs> oh, to yeah. catch up on you know well, you're doomed in that case <laughs> yeah. um okay well thank you very much for coming in and shedding light on it I, i'm just trying to get a handle on which way you're going to go though you've well, got a second book and which way do you think you'll well, go it's just the jury's still out i'm really? afraid yeah it really is because we've got i've got this it's with sarah westcott at addendum she was an editor she did Jermaine, Jermaine greer's last book so she's now looking at the manuscript and she's going to say you know what well, she's going to have a look at it and see if she thinks that she can turn it into to something that would be commercial and your final word of advice to people listening who've got a book in them maybe they've already started work on that book right blog blogging is definitely a really good way of finding an audience and and also practicing your writing but the only way that you can be a writer is to write mm. writing is the key and you've got to write and that means you've got to take that risk and put yourself out there and 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 just you know try find your find your inner writing soul and go out there and I blog at a modern military mother.com so if you want to see you know I'm always happy to hear from people who are looking for writing tips and you know but write 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 a modern military mother.com to have a look at the blog the book is tales from the domestic front line and we shall wait to see how the second book goes Claire McNaughton from Salisbury thank you very much indeed for coming in